Hey everyone, welcome back to our Apache Hoodie tutorial series. This is part 3. Today we are diving into the some advanced query types that will help you to get most out of Apache Hoodie. In the previous part, we have described table types in Apache Hoodie, which is copy on write and merge on read. Now let's explore the essential query types in Apache Hoodie. Apache Hoodie supports following query types. For copy on write table, it supports snapshot queries, incremental queries, incremental queries with CDC, and time travel. For merge on read, it supports snapshot, incremental, read optimized query, and time travel. First, let me allow you to explain all the different query types, and then I'm gonna show you a nice example which will clear the concepts. Our first query type in Apache Hoodie is snapshot queries. With snapshot queries, you can retrieve the data as it exists in the current moment. This is similar to taking a snapshot of your data and querying it. It's great uh, for scenarios where you need to analyze the most recent data. Now let's talk about incremental queries. These are by far one of the most favorite query types I personally prefer. Uh, these queries allows you to fetch only the data that has been changed since a specific point in time. This is incredibly useful for real-time data pipelines and application as it minimizes the amount of data that you need to process. The next query type we are going to discuss about is time travel queries. Now let's talk about one of the coolest feature of Apache Hoodie, time travel queries. With time travel, you can query the data as it existed at a specific point in time. This is like having a time machine for your data making it easy to analyze historical snapshots and trends. Let's understand this concept in a much better uh, way with a small example. Uh, here on my screen, I have a slide which will explain the different query types uh, for copy on write table. Let's say you have inserted record A, B, C, D, and E at time zero. If you were to run a snapshot query, you're gonna see all the records that is A, B, C, D, and E. And if you were to run an incremental query at this point, you're gonna see A, B, C, D, and E. Perfect, great. But the next time, that is at time one, let's say you updated A to A complement, D to D complement. And now if you run the snapshot, you're gonna see A complement, B, C, D complement, E. And if you were to run incremental queries, you're only gonna see A complement and D complement meaning you only see what has changed in your transactional data lake. Now at time t2, let's say a was updated to a double prime, e was updated to e complement, and a new record f was inserted. So now what happens when you run a snapshot query? You're gonna see a double complement, b, c, d complement, e complement, and f. When you run an incremental query, you can, you'll see a double complement, e complement, and f. So as you can see, uh, snapshot query will always give you the latest snapshot of your data. Incremental queries uh, allows you to build incremental pipelines to power your downstream application so that you're only processing the data that has changed in your transactional data lake. Now let's explore the scenario for MOR tables, that is merge on read. Remember in merge on read tables, your updates are stored in a log file and later on after compaction, they are converted into a base file, okay? So this is a very important concept that you need to remember. All right, we're gonna take the same example. Let's say you inserted record A, B, C, D, and E at time zero. Now let's say you were run to a snapshot query. As you guys know, snapshot query will give you the latest snapshot of the data. So you're gonna see A, B, C, D, E. If you run incremental queries for the first time, you're gonna see A, B, C, D, and E. And if you run a read optimized query, uh, you're gonna see A, B, C, D, and E. Remember, read optimized meaning anytime you create a MOR table, you're gonna see two tables being created, RO and RT. RO stands for read optimized, RT stands for real, a real time view, okay? Uh, now let's say you updated A to A complement, D to D complement at time T1, okay? So if you were to run a snapshot query, you're gonna see A complement, B, C, D complement, E. And if you were to run incremental queries, as you know, you're only gonna see um, items that has changed in your transactional data lake. So you're gonna see A complement, D complement. Your read optimized query, however, is gonna see A, B, C, D, and E. Remember, uh, this is because your data or your updates are being stored in a log file. They are not compacted yet. Hence, you're gonna see A, B, C, D, and E. Now let's proceed. At time T2, let's say you have updated A to A double prime, E to E complement and you insert a new record F. Similarly, for snapshot query, you're gonna see the latest snapshot. 
For incremental queries, you can only see what has changed in your transactional data lake. In this case, you're going to see A double prime, E, e complement, and F. However, for read optimized query, you're going to see A, B, C, D, and E. You're not going to see um, uh, the updates because they are still sitting in a log file. Now, let's assume at time t3, compaction has occurred, meaning, uh, you know, Apache Hodi are going to, you know, merge uh, and then create a base file, right? So now when you run a snapshot query, again, you're going to see the latest snapshot. If you run an incremental query, you're going to see A complement, e com uh, A double prime, E complement and F. But your read optimized is now going to show the latest data since the compaction has occurred. In this case, you're going to see A double prime, B, C, D complement, E complement and F. So I hope these concepts are clearer now. With each video and topic, I will be also providing the resources that you need to go and uh, read. In this case, I'm going to be giving you a blog post by Siva Balanarayan. Uh, this blog post is listed in the description section below. So please make sure and read uh, that particular blog to make your concepts even more clearer. Now, if you have any further questions on this particular topic, which is the query types in Apache Hodi, you can use the comment window and comment your questions and I'll try my best to get back to you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next part.